So welcome to all of you for another great class, Classroom 2.0 live show. We are thrilled to be ha joined today by Nicholas Provenzano, who's going to be sharing his fantastic experience with Evernote and student collaboration. And I know that many of you recognize him as the nerdy teacher. You'll find his blog there at thenerdyteacher.com. And as he begins presenting, I'll be sharing links with all of you during the um, presentation. A couple of things we'd like to tell you about. We always have a live binder for our show, and the live binder is a place where we store lots of related links for the show. And I'll drop that link here in the chat. And um, one exciting thing today is embedded within our live binder are several other live binders that are excellent compilations of lots of things related to Evernote. So we hope you'll enjoy those resources. And I'll drop that link in as we go along several times uh, for people that may join late. <clears throat> I also want to let you know that all of our shows are recorded and we will be posting them after the show is over on our archives and resources page. And uh, you can find all of the links, the link to the live binder, the full Illuminate recording, uh, it's Illuminate Blackboard Collaborate, and also a video recording if you'd like to just view it on the page. So we'll be posting that link as we go along too. I see Kristen has commented that the live binder has changed. And what I want to tell you, and I'm just going to go back to that page for just a second. You may notice over here that we have side tabs. And we're very excited to have this option because it allows for much more of the screen to be showing over here on the live binder. If we keep them all up at the top and that view is still available, then half the page is filled with links. So we're thrilled to have the side tabs. And this is a relatively new feature on live binders. And you have a choice when you set up your binders about whether you want the default to be the side tabs or the stack tabs up at the top. So we have chosen the side tabs for you. And now we're ready to ask you to get involved and click on that starburst and place yourself on the map. Love seeing where everyone is located. And then go ahead and type it in the chat, too. I am in Phoenix, Arizona today, where it is going to be about 72 degrees, a beautiful sunny day. And I hope some of you along the East Coast there are beginning to thaw out and shovel out. We're so glad you're here with us today. And someone's in the South Atlantic Ocean. Now, I don't know if that's an accident or if you're really out there somewhere. But you can click and drag your starburst wherever you need to move it if it doesn't drop exactly where you want it. And now I see you're, you're heading towards Alaska. <laughs> that's good. I am amazed to see someone here from Australia. I know that this is a terrible time zone for you, as well as for some of our guests over in China and, and uh, Vietnam. Great to see you. I see we have someone from France. Oh, that one just moved. Awesome. Thank you so much for adding your Starburst to our map. We're thrilled to have you. And now we want to go right ahead and ask you a few questions about yourselves to give Nicholas a little bit of background about you. So if you could vote over there by clicking on that green or that arrow to show whether you're a yes or a no, remember that's right over there under the participant list by your name. And we want to know, do you use Evernote, whether personally or with your students? Um, at this point, looks like we're, we're going about 50-50 there. That's really interesting. OK, and I'm going to publish those results for all of us to take a look at that. So you can see 
we have about 29% of you that said no, and about 42% that said yes, and some of you are still trying to find the way to vote, I am sure, um, and that's why you're showing up as none. But no worries, you can also type it in the chat if you're having trouble finding the way to vote. And our next question is, do, does your staff, oh, there's a little bit of a typo there, do, do you, your staff, or your students have trouble keeping track of your notes? So I'm going to, let me clear that and let you start voting again. I'm sorry, it was a little slow on that. Um, do you have trouble keeping track of your notes? And this you might think of as a leading question, but I can't imagine any of us saying no. Oh, oh, somebody said no, so that means you have it mastered. We'll be looking forward to hearing from you during this session. Okay, so I am going to publish those results and let you see that 55% of of us, and I am in that group, are saying, yes, we have trouble keeping track of our notes. And six of you said no, so please be ready to share your examples and experience with us. And again, still about 32% of you, 17 of you are uh, not voting, and that could be because you don't have a staff or a student set that you are working with right now. So, okay, I'm going to clear that and now go to the final poll question. Is it important to you to have your notes available at all times? Let us know what you think about that. Again, a little bit of a leading question because if you're at all familiar with Evernote, you're going to know that that's one of the awesome features about Evernote. Excellent. Love seeing all those green checks coming up. And I think we're all in agreement about that. And I'm going to publish those results. And 66% of us said, yes, it is important to us. And just a few of you, um, three of you said it wasn't important. And some have not voted. Thank you so much for adding your votes to our poll questions. And at this point, I want to do my official welcome to Nicholas Provenzano. When we asked who would be the best person to get on our show to come and share with all of you the amazing features of Evernote as you use it in your classroom with your students. And the immediate response and overwhelming response was, the nerdy teacher, Nicholas Provenzano. So we are thrilled that he's here with us today. He is an Evernote ambassador for education, and he is considered the Evernote guru by many in the ed tech field. He provides professional development training for districts that are looking to expand ed technology. He's also provided training on using Google Apps, Blogger, Docs, Google Drive, etc. Evernote for sure, Dropbox, and lots of other cloud-based stories. So we can see why he's known as the guru. He has experience in designing professional development for school districts of all sizes. And he, in fact, won a very important award just recently on the Michigan uh, Maykull Technology site as Technology Using Teacher of the Year for Pre-K through 12. So we are thrilled um, to know about that award for him. He is a regular blogger on both the nerdyteacher.com and edutopia.org. And he's been in education for over 10 years. So it's great to be hearing from someone who is such an expert, but still in the classroom. He teaches uh, over 130 students English literature. So with that, I want to say welcome, Nicholas. And I'm going to turn the mic over to you and let you take over. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm so uh, happy to be here. Um, I'm really excited to uh, chit chat with you guys. Um, the very first thing uh, that we have here uh, is the newbie question. Um, what is Evernote and what is an Evernote ambassador? 
Uh, so I'm really excited to talk to some of you because we saw almost 50-50 at one point uh, people who were not Evernote users and so maybe aren't 100% sure what it is. And I remember when I was in that position a few years ago when I sat in on a session at NedCamp about Evernote and was blown away at what it could do. So for me, um, I love kind of sharing what Evernote can do. So Evernote um, at its core is a cloud-based note-taking system. So what that means is that you can store notes, which essentially can be text, photos, uh, web clippings, depending on uh, what you use, in the cloud. And you can access it from any internet connected device. And that's what's really exciting about this is that Evernote is platform neutral. You can have your Android, you can have your iDevice, your computer, it's web um, version. Evernote is accessible anywhere there's an internet connection. And that's why I love it so much. Um, so Evernote allows you to do all of these things and their tagline, remember everything, couldn't be more accurate. Uh, for me, I use it for everything. Um, I, I do. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about how I use it for lesson planning, assignments, student collaboration today. Uh, we'll talk about all of those different aspects. But Evernote, again, at its core is a cloud-based cloud -based note-taking system that is just amazing. Um, and what is an Evernote ambassador? <clears throat> well, it's kind of crazy. Um, I had just started using Evernote and was tweeting and writing about it on my blog about how I was using it, and Evernote contacted and said, hey, we love to help and promote um, our power users, these people that use Evernote as a part of their lives, and we really are looking for these advocates for it. And so they asked if I'd be um, willing to work with them and help them uh, with what I'm doing. And I said I'd be happy to. So I'm the Evernote Education Ambassador. There's a uh, another one, and there are actually some outside of the United States as well. So the European, and I know there's one in Australia, Beck Spink, that uh, is really great using Evernote down there. So for our, our Australian visitor, um, there is a Evernote Ambassador in Education um, in Australia as well. So uh, Evernote likes to tab people that are power users and um, not like corporate shills or anything. We are people that use it and love it. and for me, I can't imagine my classroom set up without it. So as an Evernote ambassador, um, I get to kind of do these cool things, see some cool things. Uh, I got to visit their offices, which was really awesome, um, and really get to work with them and provide feedback, which is great. Because as we all know, education is just different from business models and uh, personal use. So um, helping tweak Evernote for educators is one of my big goals. And the way that my students have used it has provided tremendous feedback to Evernote who are working to make it an even better tool uh, for education, which I think it is the perfect tool um, for those of us in the uh, mobile world. So let's get this thing started here. Um, so this is me, uh, Evernote for Student Collaboration. Uh, that intro I got was was amazing. Uh, I'm, I feel almost a little embarrassed. That was almost too good for me. Um, I teach uh, high school, uh, primarily grades 9 and 10 uh, this year, but I've done 9 through 12, and I'm an English language arts teacher uh, this year, focusing, again, on freshman English and um, American literature. So those are the two classes that I have, and that is where this experiment, this Evernote experiment we're going to talk about, uh, has really laid the foundation for us. So I'm really excited to talk about that. Uh, we'll spend some time talking about lesson planning, uh, sharing portfolios, uh, how Evernote can work with bringing your own device, one-to-one -one computing, and the different partners that actually make the Evernote experience even deeper. And that's one of the really exciting parts about that is that Evernote has been more than happy to actually work with other groups like LiveScribe, DoxyScanner, um, Moleskin to enhance the Evernote experience. And that's what's really powerful about Evernote is that Evernote doesn't want to do everything, but it definitely wants to work with everyone to help them do everything. Uh, and that's what I'm really excited about uh, talking to you guys about today. So uh, let's get this thing rolling. I'm really excited. And here we go. Uh, so the biggest question is why use Evernote? Um, that was my question when I first sat in the presentation. And it's the biggest question I get from everyone that I talk about. Um, couldn't I just use Google Docs or couldn't I just, you know, take things by uh, hand? Isn't that good enough? 
And these are great questions, and I hope to show you why Evernote is the way to go when it comes to uh, lesson planning and student collaboration. So I've actually put together some really great reasons that I feel that you should use Evernote. So first off, flexibility. One of the reasons I love Evernote so much is the ability for all teachers of all content areas to use it. As an English teacher, I'm often told that it's easy for me to use because it's nothing but text. While that might be true for most English teachers, I'm much more than just text. Since I'm a project-based teacher, my notebooks are filled with pictures of projects, poster boards, and artwork. I love keeping the examples to show students down the road as a way to guide them on their projects. I have seen teachers of all content areas use Evernote with their students. All teachers can use it to share notes or assignments. One science teacher shares all of her notes using PenCast from LiveScribe. By saving all the PenCast there, students have access to all the equations they need for their chem class. Math teachers are able to share all of their notes on Evernote with students before exams help them study. The math teacher also loved to use LiveScribe pens to record the process of solving problems so the students can go back time and time again to learn how to do a problem. All of these are saved in Evernote notebooks that the students have access to. Art teachers use Evernote to take pictures of the student art so they can provide feedback to students. The notes with the images can be created. The art teacher can type the feedback in and then email the notes to the students. All of these notes can be saved by the art teacher and used to create a portfolio that can be shared with students at the end of the marking period. Social studies teachers can use Evernote Web Clipper to clip uh, current event stories and save them into a notebook that is shared with the students. The students can take their notes and write up their own, write up their own notes on why they are important to the world today. You teach music? Well, Evernote allows for audio notes. Bam! Record yourself singing or playing an instrument and share it with the students or have the students do that and share it with the teacher. The teacher can leave notes on how well they hit their notes. Get it? Uh-huh. Get no? Okay. Um, Foreign language, okay, that works with Evernote as well. Students can access notes in a shared notebook and they can work on translations, bring them to the class to share with their group. They can also record their reading of different uh, languages for their Evernote as well. Um, I have even joked that even phys ed, uh, a teacher could leave instruction and proper rate training along with diagrams that were scanned in and how to do proper stretching. Uh, the teacher could even record audio of encouraging remarks so students can listen to them while they work out. It would be weird, but it's doable with Evernote. Every content area can use Evernote. So anyone that says it doesn't apply to their content area is just not willing to try. Um, the flexibility also applies to students and parents. Students and parents do not even need accounts to access all the awesome information I just told you about. With public sharing, anyone can access all of the English, social studies, math, science, foreign language, and phys ed notes that they want without ever having to sign up for an account. This flexibility is key for schools that are just looking at getting their teachers and staff on board first, then moving on to the students. Parents not having to sign up for an account is also really nice. Some, par some parents are not very tech savvy, so providing them with links to follow that do not require them to create an account it's a nice way to keep them up to date on the work in class and involved in their child's schoolwork. Evernote recognizes that the need to be flexible in their system because every person is going to use it a little differently. These differences is what makes Evernote such a great tool for organizing our lives. Um, this is another big one I, I really get and people are very concerned. Uh, for those of us that pay close attention uh, to privacy issues and uh, how it impacts our work, and I think Instagram was the biggest no-no in recent news uh, about changing uh, security issues and uh, privacy issues. Um, so this is what uh, Evernote has always been extremely clear about. They have essentially three basic rules. One, your data is yours. Two, your data is protected. And three, your data is portable. So let's take a look at those three. Your data is yours. Evernote does not own your data. Putting notes and other content in Evernote does not change its ownership or copyright status. If the data was yours to begin with, it remains yours after you put it in Evernote. By putting data in Evernote, you give them permission to do certain things with it for the purpose of running their service. For example, you give Evernote permission to back it all up, send it on the network, index it for searching, display it on the phone, etc. 
Some of these operations may require Evernote to send your data to their normal business partners, such as a network operator that they have contracted for the purposes of the service. Other than giving them permission to perform these limited operations so they can run the Evernote service, you retain all the rights to your data. Two, your data is protected. Everything you put into Evernote is private by default. Evernote never looks at, analyzes, shares, or uses it to target ads, data mine, etc., unless you specifically ask them to do one of these things. Their business model does not depend on monetizing your data in any way. Rather, it depends on building trust, providing a great service, and eventually more and more people will choose to pay for it. In addition, Evernote takes precautions to protect your data from accidental loss and theft. Everything you put into an Evernote synchronized notebook is stored in their secure data center with multiple redundant services, uh, servers, storage devices, and offsite backups. Communication between Evernote clients and their servers is encrypted via industry standard SSL. They don't store your password on their servers, and no one at Evernote will ever ask for it. It is secure. You cannot lose it. I mean, they're not going to take it. So feel comfortable with what you put in there. And then also, your data is portable. There is no data lock in Evernote. They are committed to making it easy for you to get all of your data into and out of Evernote at any time. Their desktop software lets you export all of their notes and their content into human-readable HTML, as well as a fully documented machine-readable XML format. Evernote has a full free API that lets you access all of your data. Their philosophy is that if you're confident that you can leave Evernote at any time, then you'll be confident enough to stay with it. Um, and this is good, actually, for a few reasons for schools. Um, ownership is important when it comes to student work, and I think a lot of people are afraid of that. I think Google um, is constantly dealing with this issue in regards to well, who owns what when you type it into Google. Um, in schools, Evernote can be used, and all of the work will definitely remain the student's work. If an author uses Evernote to write a book, that book belongs to the author. No one can claim ownership of these items just because you use their service. And it's really nice that Evernote is very clear about that. Uh, security. And in education, that's huge. Um, there are many people that are concerned about the security of their information using Evernote. It's smart to ask these questions, and I think Evernote is honest with their response. Their system uses all the same secure programs other companies use to protect information. I've had many teachers question how secure information is in Evernote and other services, and I tell them it's much safer than on our school network. <laughs> Odds are these companies pay a ton more money than our average district servers do um, to secure this information. And any bit of information is only as secure as your password. So those are one of the things that I like to stress for security sake. Uh, and then lastly, the portability of it. Students will be leaving school and should be able to take their data with them. This is great. That isn't necessarily true with other services. Um, once a student graduates, they can just export all of their notes and be ready to go. So Evernote beyond anything that I could ever think of is extremely secure. And for me, when I decided to look for something for my students to use, I felt very comfortable with the answers that uh, Evernote has provided. And it's one of the easiest to read uh, bits of information on security that I have ever read in any company. And that's what I really appreciate for them. Uh, next up is organization. Um, we wish that all of our students had desks or lockers that were this clean and organized. Uh, the truth is they tend to look like garbage dumps. As much as we've all tried to push our students to become more organized, the traditional pen and paper notebook seems to be the first thing destroyed in the backpack. Also, students can never seem to use just one notebook for one class. I have kids that grab the wrong notebook for English, so Shakespeare notes are side by side with their notes on photosynthesis. It's very difficult for students to study and learn if they can't find where their notes are in their notebooks. Evernote helps solve that problem by keeping everything in their notebooks and completely searchable. When it comes to collaboration, organization is key. Too often, I used to see groups struggle because they are missing parts of a project or they were placed in a different folder or notebook. Evernote allows for better collabor collaboration through better organization. Oh, storage. Filing cabinets seem to multiply like rabbits the longer you teach. You start out with one, and the next thing you know, you are playing Tetris in your room to find the best way to fit all the cabinets in without blocking the line of sight for the students. I knew a teacher who recently retired that had eight four-drawer cabinets that needed to be emptied out when they left. That is 32 drawers stuffed with information. 
I have no idea how she found anything. I'm pretty sure she retired because we were out of cabinets to give her and there was nowhere else to put her worksheets. Evernote allows you to store information on the notes and lessons we will be using. Um, having a worksheet that goes with our lesson in the Civil War, attach it to the note you created for the unit and you'll have it wherever you are. Have a Word document that has an important essay question, copy and paste it into its own note and drop it right in the notebook. We have all spent too much time in front of the copy machine fixing jams or replacing cartridges. All of our important handouts can easily be stored in Evernote as Word documents, PDFs, JPEGs, or other formats to move between all computers. Having the freedom to be on any computer and print your documents is something of a miracle in my district. For me, our network system does not have cloud storage. We do not use Google Docs and access to all of our work requires the user to log into a district computer. If I want to show something quickly to a staff member, they have to log out and I have to log in. That quick share can take over eight minutes for the computer to get me to my documents. That's crazy. I only have seven minutes of passing time, so I can't even share between classes. Evernote allows me to access all of my documents in the cloud on any computer I want. I only have one filing cabinet in my classroom. These hold previous final exams that I'm required to keep for one calendar year in case some student decides to challenge a grade, special ed forms for students I'm currently teaching, and my stash of suckers I give to students having a bad day. I think I can actually keep them around so I have to keep the place my hex, excuse me, I have to keep them around so I can actually keep my bobbleheads uh, somewhere. Evernote provides a monthly limit on storage, but a free lifetime of storage. If you go premium, you can get one gig of storage a month. Unless you're taking high-res photos every day for 30 days, an educator should not be close to hitting that limit. I say sign up for Evernote, ditch the filing cabinets, and give some more space to kids to work collaboratively. Now, storage for students is also huge because as we look at students, again, that notebook issue, they have lots of things to store. Why should we be the only one that gets to save time and energy with storing their information? For students, they use a notebook until it's filled up with notes, torn half sheets used for quizzes, and page after page of how their names will look like with Jonas or Bieber as the last name. At the end of the marking period of semester, kids always ask me, can I throw this away, as they dangle their notebook over the garbage. They think that grading has ended so the information is no longer needed. As much as I would love to have them keep the Red Bull stained notebook for pa uh, to pass on to their future offspring, they usually ditch it. In reality, we do expect them to actually keep those notebooks year to year. I'm sure notebooks are designed to be used and tossed. They're like the Kleenex of the note-taking world. If we want our kids to see the value in their notes, we have to give them tools that give value to their notes. Evernote allows students to have all of their notes without the need to pitch them when they are done. They are completely searchable, so you can actually look up notes from previous classes or years to help understand current concepts. This access to their acquired knowledge can only be a good thing. Why wouldn't we want students to have access to all of their information on the go? Students are more mobile than ever before. They do not want to carry around a backpack filled with notebooks from all the different classes they're taking. Why should they have to when they are capable of accessing all of their notes on a mobile device whenever they want, wherever they are? Students not view the storage of information in concrete terms like we do. If it's important, it'll be on Google. Why not give them the tool to create their own Google search within Evernote for all the stuff that they write down in all of their classes? And this is where I move to ePortfolios. This is huge for me, and the storage of the notes that they put in every single time has been really exciting for my students because they finally feel a sense of organization in their note taking and their classes. And for me, that has been a huge step in the right direction. Sharing. Oh, sharing is caring, isn't it? Sharing with students is one of the big things for me that I love. Uh, sharing is not exclusive to teachers, and we try to we try to remind ourselves of that. How many times have you had to run to the copier to make one copy for the kid that lost it or just transferred into your class? That just happened to me Wednesday. A brand new student from another kid needed all of these handouts and all of these signatures, and instead of running to the copy machine, I ended up being able to share one notebook with them that had all the information that I needed. It made my life so much easier at that exact moment. Sometimes, it takes longer for you to copy the information in a copy machine than it does for the student to actually take the information in. With Evernote, students and teachers can simply share their school email with you and you can share the assignment in a second. A teacher doesn't even need to get up from their desk. This type of quick digital sharing is so much easier than the traditional paper copying sharing. Odds are the same student will be back in a couple of days later saying they need a new sheet because they spilled something all over it. With Evernote, they can spill as much as they want and go back to the shared note of their email to get out another copy. Students become more responsible for their information. Sharing this way is a major plus for teachers and students. 
all the times that I've used to have to get up and run the copy are now gone. I would have to say I'm saving a couple of hours each semester now that I don't have to do that. That seems like nothing, but think of how much work a teacher can actually get done if they were given two hours of unearthed time to work. That's a scary thought, right? On the flip side of that, imagine a student sharing their work with you. A student doesn't need to be afraid of forgetting work at home or the dog eating it. Um, all of the soda in the world couldn't destroy the work they have done in Evernote. One great example of students sharing their work with me involves a recent project my freshman completed. My students needed to create their own projects that focus on a theme from Of Mice and Men. One group of students decided to rewrite the lyrics of Walk This Way by Aerosmith. They spent a week working in their Evernote notebooks and creating amazing lyrics. The one student who was supposed to print me a copy of the lyrics to read along while they played, live with their drums and guitar, forgot to print them out. So he quickly sent me the note from his phone so I could have it on my email and my iPad. It took the student less than two minutes to make that happen. In the past, it would have been a 15-minute ordeal for him to go to the library, log in, print it off, log out, come back to class, and turn it in. This type of quick sharing was amazing and made life so much easier for everyone involved. Next up, collaboration. This is a big one. This is one of the things that I love most about, most about this. Remember when the only way to collaborate on anything was to do it in person? Uh, everyone had to be in the same room and share their thoughts. One person might be the secretary and write everything down, but everyone needed to be there if anything was going to get done. Then we moved to email. Email after email and reply alls would be sent, and everyone was trying to keep up with who said what, when, and in what order. That got very tired very quickly. Collaboration needs to be free-flowing. In the busy mobile world we live in, we do not have the time to always sit and meet to discuss every detail. It's sad, but it's becoming a part of our lives, and our students are busier now more than ever. Every part of the education community needs to collaborate in various ways, and Evernote can help, Evernote can help make that a little bit easier. As adults, sometimes we think we are the only busy ones. This is far from the truth. Our students of all ages are often overbooked with activities. You add to that the homework level kids often receive, jobs or chores around the house, and you have a very busy student sitting in front of you. Evernote has been awesome for my students. As a project-based teacher, I have many students working in groups. Without any provoking on my part, the students were able to create a notebook and share with their group to work on the different parts of the project. It was simple and awesome to watch happen. They can see on their own the value of being able to work on their own time outside of class and that they all have very different schedules. Evernote gives the students the chance to work on projects when they have the free time. It doesn't have to be in front of the computer every night. It can be while taking a break at work and they have a minute to work on their phone. They can be working on a note on their way to their soccer game or after a long field trip to the zoo. They can work on it when they want because Evernote allows them to work mobily and collaborate at different times. My students were able to build a complete transcendentalist society with a coat of arms, laws, city layout, job description, and complete presentation using shared notebooks in Evernote. Every kid had their own note, and when they saved their work, the others were allowed to view and leave comments. This type of workflow is tough to do for our busy students but they were able to do it because they used Evernote and were able to access their information whenever and wherever they are. Our students have access to mobile technologies and have more computing power in their pocket than it took to put a man on the moon. It's silly for us not to tap into that. I'll be honest, I, I generally hate having a cell phone. <laughs> really, I do. I don't like the fact that anyone can get a hold of me whenever they want. Even if it is friends, family, or terrible telemarketers, I do not want people to get a hold of me sometimes. There was something nice about being able to drive long distances without having to worry about phone calls. However, I love smart devices. My iPhone is used more for everything else than an actual phone. I do everything on this. We do everything on these devices, and why not use it for education and organization? As an educator, I think we all know that inspiration really strikes us when we are staring at our lesson plans. It happens at the oddest moments without warning. We might be having coffee in the morning, watching a cooking show at lunch, or playing roller derby at night. We have no idea when the best idea is going to hit, and we need to save it all right away. There are plenty of note apps on digital devices. I have used many of them. The problem is that they do not sync across all of my devices. I have an iPhone, iPad, desktop computer at home, laptop computer. 
Um, I also have my school computer uh, in my classroom, and then I have my laptop that I travel with. That is so many devices, even for a tech person. I needed something that would allow me to run around and keep all of my information in the same place. As teachers, we need to have the space to save our ideas and come back to them later. All educators need that space. Evernote gives you that space for free. Write down ideas and sort them using tags in notebooks so the information can be saved. Heck, I have even titled notes that idea about Emily Dixon I had at the Coney Island. I didn't know what else to call it because the idea was so weird, but I couldn't elaborate on it because it was something to do with my family. To be honest, I can't completely remember what the idea was, but I know that it's saved in Evernote, and I can pull it up by doing a keyword search for Emily Dickinson. I wish the life of an educator was like Mr. Feeney from Boy Meets World. I had all the best ideas when the students wanted them, and all my lessons were understood completely by all the students in a neat 30-minute chunk once a week. That is not the case. Lessons are never perfect and are constantly under revision. The tough part is finding the time to sit and revise. Sometimes the best time to reflect and revise is when all the kids have passed out and there's 22 minutes to get some work done. That work can now be done from the comfort of any mobile device I have handy. Rocking a baby to sleep in one arm and editing a lesson plan in the other on the iPhone is something I will never admit to for my wife, but will share with you. Multitasking is a ninja skill that all educators slash parents need to master if they ever expect to accomplish anything ever again. With the mobile advantage that Evernote brings to the table, I can be working on anything I want in Evernote wherever I am. I have done lesson planning while waiting for my physical therapist to call me in so I can practice skipping to strengthen my bum ankle. I have worked on Evernote while waiting for the guy's soccer game to start. I have used it on the side of the road as I waited for AAA to pick me up uh, after a nasty flat tire. I have used it at night, during lunch, and any other time you can think of. If someone were to make a device so I could actually use Evernote in the shower, I would use it there. That is what's important, is being able to use the information whenever you can. Mobile technology allows all educators to create and collaborate on the fly. Some see that as a bad part of technology and that we're losing these very valuable personal skills. I'll usually send those people an email telling them they are crazy. Seriously though, Evernote and all technology when used correctly actually will open up time to spend with loved ones. Those times I used Evernote waiting for the physical therapist, the soccer game, the tow truck, etc. saved me from having to hunker down at home and get work done. There might be some front-end time spent on using technology, but the time saved on the back-end is awesome. The same thing applies to students. By moving to Evernote, I gave my kids something they never had before in other classes, a mobile option. With Evernote, my students are now able to read stories, do their work, submit assignments from their phone or other mobile devices. Students can read essays, provide feedback to peers on their way to their volleyball game or between acts of their play rehearsal. I've been flooded with compliments from students and parents who love the fact that they can now access assignments from their phone. They often complain that teacher websites are usually not updated and can be a pain to navigate on their phones. Evernote allows me to share notebooks with them and they can use Evernote app to view these notes on their mobile device. These students are on the go and it's silly to refuse to meet them halfway and give them access to the information they want. It's not that the kids do not want to do their work. They want to do it and they want to do it in an easier way. We want to expect the same from our bosses. Why not give it to our students? The world is not moving away from mobile technology anytime soon. Wearable tech is the new advancement, so I wouldn't be surprised to see Evernote integration possibly in the Google Glasses when they come out, um, or a new mythical Apple smartwatch. Um, Evernote works across all platforms, and that is huge when confronting the digital divide. Here we go. Um, one of the biggest concerns for educators is the digital divide. Um, I didn't just pick Evernote because it was the fanciest platform out there. Um, I chose it because I needed something that would not prevent students from working. I teach in a district where there is a growing segment of students on free and reduced lunch. This is a new aspect of our district, and I used to be able to assign work and expect for it to get typed up on the computer and turned in the next day. This is not true anymore. I needed something that could be used with the students who do not have a desktop computer at home. Uh, I was also able to supply funding for a class set of iPads for my room. I begged, borrowed, and did things I'm not proud of to get this iPad cart for my room. Some might think I just wanted the cart to be the cool teacher of the iPads. That's partially true. I'm not going to deny that being cool isn't a big thing with the iPads. But the other reason I went with the iPads was because I wanted to give my students access to technology they might otherwise not have. The iPads are used every single day in class and are available to all of my students before or after school at lunch. For some students, I allow them to take them home. 
I did not have Evernote right away when I rolled up the iPads. I didn't know that it was what I was going to need. It wasn't until I really wanted my kids to interact with the iPads that I realized they were glorified search engines. The students needed to take their notes in their notebooks so they could have their notes at home. Well, what's the point of having the iPads if you're not using them for note-taking? I also noticed that all of my students did not have access to a home computer, had a smartphone, and or an iDevice. It wasn't that my students did not have computers, it was more the fact that they didn't have printers. This changed everything. The digital divide I saw was actually something I had created. By requiring students to print out their work, I created a chasm that was causing so much grief. The other part of this issue was that the students were never shown the power of using these devices. Their smartphones and eye devices are powerful tools if they are used correctly. It was my job to show them how to get the most out of their tool. And that's what Evernote brought to the table for these kids. My kids are now able to access assignments, notes, do work, all on their phone. And I needed to find a tool that would allow them to do that most successfully. And that's what Evernote brought to the table. So what Evernote has done is shrink that digital divide uh, to a small crack in the road that my students can easily hop over with a little bit of help. And that's what I'm excited about with Evernote helping my students accomplish. Um, we're now in a world where BYOD and 101 are spreading to districts around the country. Whether you support one or the other, the main issue that needs to be considered is how do we best help students manage these devices in such a way that they become powerful learning tools. In BYOD, the biggest problem people worry about is supporting so many different devices and teacher create lessons that allow to use all of these different devices. Evernote is the perfect solution for BYOD. Evernote is platform neutral. The apps work across all iOS devices, Android, Blackberry, and Windows phones. All the smart devices are covered. Also, as long as these devices have browsers, the students have access to Evernote. So if you go Chromebooks or iBooks or whatever it is you want to go with, since it's a web-based browser on top of everything else, Evernote is accessible across everything. So the one thing before I start to show you guys uh, some of the wonderful uh, ways that I've used it specifically is that Evernote has a lot of great partners. And LiveScribe is one I've seen people talk about in the chat more than anything else. Doxy for scanning has been great for me to scan work. And the Moleskin Notebook allows you to take pictures and record actual handwriting. Evernote works great with a lot of different partners, and I'm really excited about the things we're able to do in my classroom. So it's definitely something you want to take a look at. Um, Evernote is free, and that's the great thing about it. 100,000 notes, 250 notebooks, 10,000 tags, 100 saved searches, 25 megabit, uh, megabytes per note, uh, and 60 megabytes per month. It's a great free service that really encourages people to really take a look at the benefits of the classroom. Uh, the premium version offers a lot more, and you can get it all for five months, five excuse me, five dollars a month, or forty-five bucks for a year. Um, you can get larger upload size, offline notebooks, priority support, note history, faster, faster image recognition, and you can get rid of all the promotions. So the premium thing has been fabulous for me, and I'm really excited about um, the extra tools that come along with it. As a someone who uses as much as I do, I really like those extra features. So I want to show you guys some of the examples of how I've used uh, Evernote specifically. And one of the things that I'm going to do um, for you guys is show you some of the ways that uh, I have integrated here. And so what we have here for me is this is the Mac app for Evernote. So you can actually download the Mac app. It's free. And you'll have the Evernote platform on your screen. And what you have here are all the different little notebooks that have been created. Um, it's a general notebook, notebook layout that the students would see. Uh, these are my notebooks, and I wanted to show you how easy it is for students to share and collaborate using Evernote. Oops, there we go. Um, so what you have here is the average notebook. We're going to start by looking at this notebook labeled Super Cool Project. Uh, students can create and name as many notebooks as they want. They can decide to keep some notes in private notebooks and then move them over to a shared notebook or they can create a shared notebook and keep everything in there. That flexibility has been really great for my students when it comes to collaboration. So when you want to share, in the corner of each notebook is the sharing icon. This is where you go for all of your sharing needs. Right there. 
One of the many reasons that I love Evernote so much is that it gives users so many different options. When it comes to sharing, there are two specific ways to share with other people. So let's like to take the first one, inviting the individual. For student work, students often need to create notebooks and share them with their group to get their work done. First, the email addresses linked to the account need to be entered in. After that, the owner of the notebook decides what type of access they want everyone else to have. So they can view notes, view notes and activity, modify notes, and modify and invite others. For me, I share notebooks with all of my students. These notebooks hold the assignments, handouts, and miscellaneous information I want the students to have. I only want them to view these notebooks so that what I choose in the settings from there. For group projects and other collaborative efforts, viewing and modifying notes makes the most sense. In some instances, you might want others to invite others. This is all possible for this share feature. There is also space to leave a note to the people who receive the email to join the notebook. Right now, you cannot join the notebook through the app. It would go through the email sent to the account address. Uh, let's take a look at the other option for sharing. Um, I love this one. In the second option, a user can create a public link that anyone can see. I use this feature to place the link on my, of a notebook I want everyone to view. This is a faster way to have large groups of people join a notebook if you do not want to send out um, over 100 emails. I also like the fact that I can personalize the URL as well. Little things like that are fun. It can also make remembering the address easier for students. One of the things that I do is on my school website, I actually will hyperlink to the notebooks I want to publicly share, like the assignment notebook, so parents can access that notebook as well. They can join it if they want, but they don't have to, but they can at least still view the entire notebook, which has all of the assignments, and that's really great. Um, another great thing here is inside the notebooks, you will find all of the notes. Uh, the notes will appear on the left, and the selected note will appear in the large box to the right. So when kids take a look at the notes, they will appear on the left, and they will show up large when they've been selected. Um, when working with multiple people on a notebook, I always tell my students that they should be, uh, they should label their notes with their name in the title so people know whose note it is in the notebook. I also encourage students to use the tag feature in Evernote. They plan on doing many different parts to a larger project so they can easily find the information later on. The one thing that cannot be done in Evernote is have more than one person edit the same note at the same time. Work will be lost and will cause some craziness with the notes. I tell my students that they should work on their individual notes in the notebook and then bring them together when they are done. This is the one feature that Google Docs has that Evernote does not, and for some, this is a big downside. For me, it's never been an issue for my students as they work on their projects, though. Um, sometimes people will want to share an individual note and not an entire notebook. Evernote provides some great options here for sharing an individual note. I love the Facebook and Twitter sharing options. I don't use the LinkedIn sharing option, but the email note option has been awesome for me and my students. Students who are out sick and need notes can get them emailed to them by a friend in a class very quickly. This is a feature that is used almost daily by my students as they take notes in Evernote and email them to students that are not in class. The flu bug that's been going around has knocked many of my students out of class, but they've been able to keep up thanks to the Evernote and some of these helpful friends in class. So one of the things that I want to do uh, right now is actually show you guys uh, the layout of my Evernote notebook in my uh, student Evernote layout. So I'm actually going to share my screen with you so you can actually um, take a look at specifically how I lay out my information. So we're going to head over to that right now. Okay, I am hoping that everyone can see uh, the sharing screen here, what I have for you. Um, what you'll see on my screen here is that I've labeled very specific notebooks. Um, what we have here is one labeled American Literature. So when I open that one up, I have notebooks within a notebook. So it allows you to do a two-level stacking system. And I have one labeled AL Assignments, so it's American Lit Assignments, AL Handouts, AL Notes, and AL Stories. So each one of these, as you can see, has this nice little tab here that shows people. That means that I'm sharing that notebook. So let's show AL assignments for you guys here. I am sharing this notebook, as it says here, with 47 people. These are all of the notes that I create for every single assignment that my students are working on. And it's great. And within these assignments, I can do many different great things. For example, 
here's an essay that the students are going to be working on with Poe's Obsession with Death. Uh, within it, I have here directions. I have a rubric that I cut and paste. But I have also attached the Word document as well. I have shared this entire notebook with every single one of my American Lit students. So that's 47 students over uh, two classes. So what we see here for me is that by labeling these assignments, and I can do that here, I can change the labels if I want to go back, but I always label them by due Thursday, February 14th, or due Friday, February 15th, so my students can go back and find that information. So all of these notes go back really, really far to the beginning of the school year. So my students can actually find all of the information on every assignment that we have done in class, and I can attach whatever I want to it. I also have a notebook for my handouts. So these are different handouts for different things here. Uh, a syllabus, a MLA formatting guide, um, thesis statement help for kids, and an iPad permission slip, which is another Word document there. I also, if you notice, tag them appropriately in case I need to find something I'm specifically looking for. And I also have one labeled AL Notes. Um, these are all the different notes that I need students to have for various projects. Uh, sometimes they are extra tips about certain authors we're reading uh, as I scroll through all of that information here. Um, here is one where I actually clipped an entire video into it for students to find. Uh, writing peer review uh, top 10 mistakes that I had my students watch one day when I was not in school. I provided them with a link to the audio version of the lottery here. Information on Puritanism in New England, uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald biography, uh, more in-text citation by Owl Purdue. I was able to provide all of this information to all of my students, and I'm really excited about that because it didn't cost me one single piece of paper, and that's a big one. And then the AL Stories one are links to all the stories that we read in class. So my students can actually access all of the work that we are reading from their mobile device. They do not have to print out uh, or take home a gigantic textbook anymore. And that's a huge advantage. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you was my freshman ePortfolios. Now, I can't open up the individual work because it's got students' first and last names and privacy concerns and all that uh, fun security stuff. But I want to show you the layout of it. So I have all of these students alphabetically listed in this portfolio. My students created a notebook and shared it with me and gave me editing rights. What that allows us to do now is actually have a running back and forth dialogue within their notebook where I can assess their work, provide feedback, and they can respond privately. And that's what I love most about this. I, I, I hate passing work back in person in class because it's always awkward because you have kids sitting at tables, some doing better than others, and you know, when I pass it back upside down, the kid is embarrassed because he doesn't know what the grade is and you know, his friends want to know what's going on. It, it just is always painful to me. Evernote has helped me eliminate that problem because students can scan in their work, take a picture of the work, and drop it into Evernote. I can correct work, give it back to them. They can review and see the work, put it into their portfolio, and then we can have an ongoing conversation about their work. And so you can see some people have more notes than others as they've been in class and have turned in more work and have um, really reviewed and had more conversations with me about their work. And that's what's really exciting about this aspect of the ePortfolio is that I've eliminated this gigantic paper trail but now have access to all of their work and better yet, these portfolios can be shared with their parents. They can be shared with counselors. It can follow them to wherever they go until they eliminate their account. And that is such a huge bonus for communication and reflection that I'm really emphasizing to my students that's a part of the learning and education process is reflecting on your work. And now my students will actually be able to do that. Well, one of the other things that portfolios uh, will be doing in my class is that for the final exam in June, my sophomores will actually be looking at all of the work that they have reviewed 
excuse me, all the work they have saved in their portfolio on Evernote, and they will be writing an essay as their final exam to reflect on their writing and where their strengths and weaknesses lie and how they can become better writers. So I'm really excited that in the past, the traditional portfolio of manila folders or passing it back to the kids and keeping your fingers crossed they didn't lose it in a binder um, are long over for me, and that's something I'm really excited about. And the one thing I want to show you guys before we get to questions is lesson planning. I think a lot of people had interesting questions about lesson planning they wanted to address. Uh, American Lit Lesson Planning. So one of the things that I did for lesson planning is each note represents a unit. So right now I am working on my Gothic Literature Unit, and it's really great because you can add links, you can uh, put your information in there. So I label things by day, and that's what we're going to do each day. And I can move my notes around within a school year and do different units at different times. So it gives me that flexibility to move things around. I no longer use the paper lesson planner anymore. Um, I have my lesson plans with me all of the time. Wherever I go, I have my lesson plans with me, and I can check, tweak, annotate, and fix anything that I want. Uh, one of the notes I made here, I'll show you this, um, I make notes in red, and the reason that I make uh, notes in red is so that I know that at the end of the year when I go back over my uh, lesson plans, I know what my thoughts were at that moment. And for this one, I left a note saying, skip this year due to time constraints. Um, I got hit with a bug, a uh, flu bug, and I was out uh, for a number of days. And to make sure everything was still going on track, I decided to cut the raven uh, this year. It breaks my heart, but it was one of those decisions I needed to make, so I made a note to myself that I skipped it this year due to time constraints. Um, and then I added something else. Gave an in-class essay on Usher and the two meetings of the house. This is statement two body paragraphs only. So I made a note that I actually added something to the class to actually give them something to do writing-wise as an impromptu. Um, you can also make links in your notes to other notes, which is another really cool tip to bounce between notes back and forth. So when you're lesson planning, you can find the notes very quickly. So with lesson planning is I got my Gatsby unit, uh, women's voice unit, uh, how I ordered my entire second semester, um, notes on Huck Finn, Transcendentalism, Puritanism, Essay Writing Unit, Conpro, Catcher in the Rye, um, and all of the fun parts of my lesson planning are all available to me now wherever I go and can easily be shared with other teachers, administrators that are interested in my work. Um, so for me, as I look at how I organize my school life, you know, I'm happy that I have Evernote because I can do all the different things that I want and save them and make them accessible to others uh, who need that information. So from that standpoint, that's why I'm really excited about um, how I've used Evernote for lesson planning. Um, can we go off of the, oh, wait, here it is, application sharing, stop sharing, found it. And we're going back to the slides. Here we go. Um, for me, when I look at Evernote and using it with students and the ways that it can change the way that you teach and the way that you share information, um, I'm really excited because we need, in my opinion, to stop looking at students as learners of how we learned. They are learning differently, they are accessing information differently, and Evernote has been a wonderful tool to provide them with the information that they need on the go. So I'm really excited about what Evernote has been able to bring to the table, and I know this sounds kind of like a pitch, and um, I do not get paid by Evernote um, to do this. It's just I think it's almost silly to ha not have almost every student with an Evernote account or every teacher with an Evernote account to save their information because I feel like it has opened up so much time and energy in the things that I do, and I've seen student engagement uh, increase because kids now have access to information that they uh, felt like they could never get on their own. So I, I'm a big proponent of this, uh, obviously, um, and I'm happy to work with anyone that has questions about Evernote um, for student collaboration and for note-taking for themselves and for lesson planning. So um, I think we'll open it up to questions now. Um, oh, there it is. Perfect. Um, that anyone might have that I might have missed. Great, Nicholas. We have lots of questions, and then we will be taking some from the mic as well. Okay. Uh, one of the main questions that have been asked uh, asked are about student and teacher accounts. 
um, do you recommend a teacher having an account and then setting up student accounts underneath that account or teacher notebooks? And is each notebook a student account? Um, well, Evernote doesn't work that way where you like a teacher account and then there are a bunch of sub sub accounts like underneath it. These are okay. like my like my students at the high school level, they all have their own personal accounts. Now I walk them through the setup process. They all have student emails uh that our district provides. So I walk okay. them through the setting up process um of creating their account and then uh sharing those notebooks with them. I think because ultimately and I think this is what's important about Evernote is that they want you to own your data. So at the high school level, for sure, I want these kids to own these accounts because after a year, they're going to leave my classroom. So right. I, I definitely don't want to be in charge of their accounts and have any right. of that issues. Um, I could see at the elementary level um, where a teacher might have their account and then create specific notebooks for students so that they can scan work into those notebooks and then provide those students or parents with a link so that they can actually access those notebooks um, at home, which would be uh, possible. That way, you know, at the younger ages, maybe you want to scan in all their artwork. You want to scan in and take pictures of field trips and things like that. Um, so I think from that standpoint, in the elementary or middle school level, a teacher account would be great. And then individual notebooks labeled for students um, could remain private between you and the parents so that the parents would be given a maybe a bit.ly link that links directly to that notebook where they can actually have access to view all of the student work um, over the course of that year. And then what's really neat is that that notebook could be shared with the next year's teacher. And so then that next year's teacher can take over and continue to add work. And so that's kind of nice is that um, with a situation like that, that the notebook can continue to grow and the portfolio can continue to grow with just a simple sharing by an email. Okay. So when you send out, when you share the link to that notebook with that student, say, um, yeah. then they can edit anything that's in that notebook. They, and, they need an account. They need an account to edit. You have to, you can share a link for people to view, but if you okay. want them to, if they want them to edit, they need their own account. And maybe if, again, at the younger level, you have parents, you know, create an account and okay. they, they actually, but, for there to be co-editing, both people need an account to just view and uh, view a link, uh, like a notebook. You can anyone can view a notebook link, um, but they can't edit it unless you give them editing rights, and you need an Evernote account uh, to edit. So, in order obviously to have an Evernote account, you need an email account. You do need an email address, yes. Okay, so if they have a Google Apps account, that obviously would work. Yes. Um, you can also use the Gmail Plus. Um, trick for 25 or 30 students. Yes, and I saw you put that in the, yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's on the uh, the chat there, and that's and that's another uh, uh, mm -hmm. way to do that as well. Yes. Okay. So then they would have be able to collaborate. But as far as having a notebook where a, where several students could collaborate on one note or in one notebook. As, as long as everyone has an account and that notebook has been shared with everyone, everyone can access that notebook and everyone can edit it. Um, at like the same my, time? Not at the same time. It's the, well, y yes and no. Um, you can, but it causes some problems with saving. Since the note is saved in the okay. cloud, if one person is editing and it gets saved, it might, you might lose other work. So it's, it's a thing that Evernote is well aware of and, and, and says okay. that we're not – designed for that. And so for my okay. students that are collaboratively working in the classroom, what I tell them to do is work individually on notes within that notebook and then bring that information together all at the same time. Uh, it is the one downside is the, the real time uh, collaboration in one specific note. But what my students have done is when they divide the work of the project up, they do it in individual notes so that other people can still see what others are doing oh, and leave okay. comments because they're on different notes. So you can still do that within the notebook. The note just the notebook just houses the different notes. So the group of four or five students can still interact with the different notes, um, but just okay. not the same note at the same time. 
that causes some problems with the cloud storage. Okay, so that's how you could get around the um, collaboration on everybody collaborating on one document. You just have within that one notebook, you have several different documents going on. Yeah, you just have several, yeah, several different notes okay. for the different parts of the projects, and that's and that's how my kids have done it, and um, they say it's not, you know, not a really a problem for them. Okay, okay, that sounds great. Okay, because there were a lot of questions about that, um, okay. and sharing the folder, and and you can share this, you can share the folders without having a premium account. Yes, um, a free account allows you to. Uh, share your notebook uh, with anyone else. Now, to share a notebook to allow others to edit it, so to to share to allow editing, you need a premium account. To just share it so people can view, you need a, you can have a free account. Um, so the premium account allows you to share and for those people to edit. Now, the, the people you share it to, they don't need a premium account to edit. So. For, so for me as a teacher with a premium account, so when I create notebooks and I want kids to edit them and, and work on them, they actually don't need the premium account to edit. Only the person who is sharing needs the premium account um, to instigate the share notebook slash editing. Um, and I guess the one thing that I can say is, is that at 45 bucks for a year, um, it is worth the investment with the extra little pieces you get of it, you get with Evernote. If you're just going to use Evernote primarily for lesson planning and uh, not a lot of collaboration, the free account will be perfect for you. But for me and the work that I do, um, I want to share notebooks so that people can edit them and, and collaborate and, and work on you know, writing pieces for my blog, Regitopia. So the sharing aspect is nice. And for kids, um, since I have the premium account and I set up a lot of these sharing notebooks, they can do the joint editing um, for their e-portfolio or for their group projects. So that's how that works, uh, and it works really well. Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and officially close out the show. We know that several of you have to leave, and we completely understand that. We will continue recording, so the the full webinar as, long, as well as the chat log with the questions and everything that's um, we've discussed will be posted on our website at live.classroom20.com once we conclude. So if you have to leave, we certainly understand that everything will be posted there and we will continue taking questions um, once we uh, officially concluded the show. Uh, so if you're going to, uh, we invite you to stay tuned, but if you have to leave, we invite you to check back on our website. We want to let you know that on February the 19th, Steve Hargadon will be interviewing Paul Thomas, and on the 21st, Marie Gibbons, and on February the 26th, Gavin Dykes, and on February the 28th, Roger Shank. All of those sessions are at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern, and they're going to be fantastic interviews. If you haven't interviewed, uh, attended one of Steve Hargadon's sessions, I highly recommend that you check out his uh, interview sessions and recordings at futureofeducation.com. And next week we will be talking, oh, I thought it, next week was the scratch session, but it's the week after that. Um, next week we will have another featured teacher session with Ryan Hong. Um, we found him online, and uh, we would love for some featured teacher recommendations, and we'll tell you about that in a minute. And then on March 2nd, we'll be talking with Heidi Williams about Scratch and her stretch and what the stretch acronym means. And then March 9th, we will have the March Feature Teacher Session with Jamie Cook. And then March 16th, Guru for Learning. And we'll find out what Guru stands for with the Guru team. So stay tuned for those sessions. And the Feature Teacher, there's the link. Then the link is also in our live binder. Uh, we hope that you will check that out, and you can nominate a, any educator that works with other educators and students. We would love for you to nominate them and suggest them for a future session. So just please, at any time, fill out that 
that uh, form and nominate an educator for a future session to be our featured teacher for the month. As soon as you exit today's session, a survey link will open and we would love for today's feedback on today's session as well as topics for future sessions. And anytime you view a webinar, one of our recordings, we would love for you to fill out that same link, that survey link in the link is also in our live binder. And then you can request a professional development certificate for today or the webinar that you watch. Just put in the title, your name and email address, and Peggy will send that to you via email. You can also subscribe to our iTunes U channel for the MP3 or the MP4 of every session. Or you can subscribe via RSS feed to our blog post and receive the same information as well as the resources from our blog page. So all of those resources are accessible once we conclude each session. So you can subscribe either way. And I'll add that question, Roberto, to the uh, list of questions that we'll continue asking Nick in just a second. And we want to extend a very special thank you to Nicholas today for joining us and this fantastic presentation. And I know that we'll probably um, have lots and lots of questions um, that will come up after the session. So uh, we may want to have a future session on Evernote as well. And we want to extend a, a thank you to Steve Hargadon, who's the founder of our webinar series, and to Weedly for our website, and to each of you for contributing to today's discussion, as you do each and every week, in suggesting great educators for our um, series, and to Blackboard for providing this forum for us to meet each week. So I will put it back to um, Nicholas's uh, contact information and the, uh, let me put it back there for just a bit so you can get that information if you want to uh, contact Nicholas. And then we'll head back to questions. Um, let me see if I can find where I uh, left off. Uh, somebody asked if you use Google Apps at all or if, you, if Evernote has replaced Google Apps. Um, I have uh, I have my students use Blogger. I do have them do blogging. Well, I have my sophomores do it. I actually have my freshmen do their writing prompts, their creative writing prompts, actually in Evernote in their ePortfolio. But I do have my sophomores use Blogger. Um, our school is in a very slow transition to Google Apps. Um, and also, when I needed to make a decision on what tool to use, Google Drive hadn't been released yet for the iPad. Um, so that wasn't an option for me because the amount of work I wanted my students to do, and with a class set of iPads and the only set in the entire district, I needed something that worked effectively on the iPad and Google uh, Docs uh, did, did not, uh, especially um, without the Google Drive app. And even with the Google Drive app, I, you know, personally I, I'm just not super impressed with it yet. Um, Evernote works amazingly in the way that the camera and the audio notes uh, can all be dropped in very quickly. Um, for me, has Google beat in that area. Again, the, the, co the collaboration aspect of it in real time is really nice, but it's not something that my students seem to be missing out on because when they're together in class, they can collaborate in OneNote in Evernote. When they're not together, they are very rarely in the same spot at the same time where they can work. So um, our students are so busy that the collaborative aspect of Google uh, Docs is actually lost on them. Okay. And and you definitely don't want it blocked or and Evernote is easily accessible for you on all of the devices in your district. Yeah, uh, good point. Uh, someone said uh, um, Evernote is not blocked in the district. No, um, and that I know district to district. I've heard some people say that it's blocked because it's file sharing and. You know, I went to the district just in advance to say, hey, make sure this is, you know, unblocked. There's no reason to block it. It's because it's labeled certain things, um, like I said, file sharing. So, so, you know, I think a lot of administrators still view that as, you know, sharing of music or movies and, you know, that's not what Evernote is about. So I think there is um, an issue uh, with how it's viewed. 
um, as a file share, but my district had no problem opening it up. Um, most districts don't have problems, but sometimes it's just blocked in advance just because of how it's labeled, and sometimes just notifying the right people um, will uh, solve that problem. Sure, getting that content filter to allow that access to it. Yeah. Um, and talking about the content filter and, and uh, terms of service, is there an age limit with Evernote? Uh, no, and this is one of the interesting things. Um, Evernote says that because the information, the data, they're, they're really not collecting any data, um, that okay, that's right. they, how, how do I say this? I want to say this, make sure I say this right. Um, the responsibility is left to the school and the teacher okay. and the district. Um, that's kind of how they, 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 uh, present that. Um, you know, the best thing would do if you're if people are curious and want maybe a, a more specific answer uh, that I can give um, would be to tweet um, Evernote schools or to send Evernote an email. They're they're super great, but um, there has never been a problem um, with uh, that type of information um, being shared and student information. So my district has been okay with that. And that's great that they're accepting of that. Yeah. Um, somebody asked earlier if KidBlog interfaces with Evernote. Uh, in what, I guess in what way? I mean, I, I, I've used KidBlog and I haven't seen a um, a button in it. But there's if you have Google Chrome, if you have um, I think Safari, um, it's called about every the, every browser. There's a called a Web Clipper. Mm -hmm. It's the Evernote Web Clipper, and what that does is it actually clips a web page and drops it into a note. So that's one way that you could have a Google blog, or excuse me, a kid blog page up and then clip it into Evernote. So that's one way that they can go back and forth. Um, that's so that's one way to do it, but I don't know of any specific tool or uh, code or anything that yeah, to one directly goes into the other. It. Yeah. Yeah. And what kind of instruction do you give your students on big note taking? Uh, on note taking, um, yeah. the high school level, it's kind of funny. Um, I tell kids that they're not required to take notes, um, and they're not, um, and they kind of look at me all funny. I said, "Listen, I'm not going to be the one that has to study these to, you know, write an essay. I'm not oh, the one that yeah. has to, you know, I, I, I let them know that it's not a required part of my class. But then I emphasize, and we spend the class period, the value of note taking." You know, we talk about the things that are going to be important and how you understand that information and, and what you can put information down and how it's so important to learn shorthand <laughs> because you know, there will just be times that you can't write everything down. Um, so with kids at the high school level, um, I'm, they've been note taking for quite some time. So they're really not newbies to this, um, but you know, in the digital world, you know, I, when it comes to note taking, I tell kids, you know, that they need to summarize and they need to take information and put it in their own words so that they can understand it. Um, so I don't spend a whole lot of time on it, and I don't collect the notes, I don't check notes, um, because I think it's that sense of freedom that they have um, to again that ownership of their information and their notes. And I tell kids, I'm like, if you want to go through all class without taking notes, if you can ace my class without taking a single note, good for you and shame on me. That's why I tell them. Um, you know, because really, you know, I think we've all had um, mm -hmm. classes where you could totally not take a single note and pass, and you felt like it was a waste of your time. Uh, I try to make my classes so that the conversations are interesting and that notes need to be taken to not necessarily answer questions, but sometimes ask more questions that they have to think about, if that makes sense. Oh, definitely. That's a good point. Because some students are so auditory that they don't necessarily, like you said, take notes to mm -hmm. take notes. It's, like you said, to remember to ask a certain question or uh, and, jog and their memory about a point. And Evernote allows for audio uh, recording, so a kid could actually oh, yeah. record the class lecture in an audio note and take notes at the same time. Um, so from that standpoint, I've had kids do that as well, and that's really great. Oh, that's a great point. That's a great point. Um, is Evernote not available in any other language? Um, I know Evernote is available in language as in another country or Americans who need it for like foreign language classes, I guess. I'm so. not certain. 
Um, I know that Evernote is rolled out in Europe, in Australia, and other places like that, that Evernote is actually more popular uh, in the EU than it is actually in the United States. Um, far more users are over in Europe than they are in America. Um, so I'm assuming that those downloads are all adjusted for those languages. Um, now, if you're, let's say, a French teacher here and you want to use it, um, I guess I can say I don't know uh, 100%. I, I don't teach French. and um, I, 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 Assuming the, the um, Apple keyboard, uh, I, I'm thinking iPad, I guess, um, you, whatever keyboard that you have you know, that you're using on your computer can be set to write in different language. Um, but I don't know of any set uh, language settings or anything. Uh, I have need to explore that, but uh, I'm going to make a note to myself to find that out because that's actually a really good question. I would think, you know, the language dominates because I know we've had different people from different countries join our sessions and they've asked how they change the headings of Blackboard um, within the browser, you know, once mm -hmm. they get in Blackboard to English. But it, it depends on the country that they're logging in from. Yeah, um, that's interesting. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, oh, someone you know, translate that every note .com. So Peggy just posted a, a link there. Perfect. Interesting. So I would assume they do, but I'm not certain. Yeah. That was just one of the questions that somebody um, requested. And if they don't have an email for students and they don't use the Gmail trick, is there any other way that they can um, have a, share a notebook and have that student edit the notebook? If they, if you give them your account, I mean that'd be. I mean if the okay. student, I mean that's the only thing other that I can that. think of is that you create a you know a school account with a school like your school email address or something, and or you create a Gmail account that's just for this, and you give kids all of the access. Um, you know, if you felt comfortable doing that, um, that's probably the best way to do it. Okay, and somebody asked how their core students could log in and use Evernote to record themselves. Uh, how to do that? Yes. Um, well, it, uh, on the apps, there is a little button that's got, that looks like a microphone. So you just, when you open up a new note, there's a little app right there, a uh, little icon, excuse me, that looks like a microphone. You tap that and it just starts recording. Uh, and then it'll record, 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 and then you just when you're done, you hit stop. So it's actually a really nice, simple, um, easy thing to do on Evernote. It's very easy to record. Um, on the desktop, I believe it's just another, uh, I normally don't record on the desktop because uh, it's so much easier to do mobily. Let's take a look here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's same on the desktop. You, you can use either an external yeah. mic or uh, yep, the built-in mic. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, so I mean, those are, I mean, a nice little bits of information uh, that, you know, sometimes you want to make a, a voice memo and you just want to drop it into there and that's really great. Um, and also, it, uh, you can attach basically any file to Evernote. You can just attach it like you would do an email. So if you have previous voice recordings, you can just boop, drop it in there uh, and attach it and then you can have access to it wherever you are. Uh, and that's also really nice. And I was suggesting somebody asked um, how they could use it with their kinder students. Well, you know, she could ask, put in the MP3s that, or the music that she's going to use with the students in the class. That's a great. I know there are music teachers that have, have used it, um, have students record, like the teacher has the one device, and the, student, the teacher would create a different note for each student, and they would play their piece. And she would be able to share that with them later on through an email, so the kid would actually have that audio recording. And it, um, that's how you can do it in a, in a one device classroom, is that each student was able to do. Or if you had the whole class play together, you could record it, share mm -hmm. that note on your website with a public link, and then all the parents could listen to the classroom perform. Um, mm -hmm. And again, all of that through one app, and that's amazing. That's amazing. Very powerful. There's so many ways that you can use this. Um, you know, we could discuss this forever. It's endless. The ideas. There was one. There was one question. Uh, someone asked about Mol the Moleskin uh, notebook. Um, I, I do want to talk about that really quick. Uh, okay. The Moleskin notebook is awesome. Um, so it's like a regular traditional Moleskin uh, notebook with the handwriting, and it's got 
the paper has got special little dots all over it. Um, think kind of like LiveScribe. So you can do all the hand no note taking that you want, and then I do. I love my Moleskine notebook. And then you open up every note, you create a new note on your mobile device, and there's a special camera button to use that specially reads the um, notes in the notebook. And what that does is that it becomes an actual searchable part of the Evernote system by taking that picture and it turns it into uh, a searchable PDF essentially. So your handwriting, as long as it's legible, can be identified and searched within Evernote. Um, despite how tech crazy I am, um, I still like to take things by hand. Uh, I, I love note taking, I love brainstorming that way. Um, and it has been awesome. And I graph out photos and pictures and ideas in, in my Evernote notebook, and I'm totally allowed to um, take a picture of it and it goes right into my Evernote notebook, and it's searchable. Uh, and that is, for me, amazing, amazing. Can so, you print that paper? No, right now you can't. The notebook is oh. the notebook itself. And I, I know, and the notebooks are maybe a little pricey, I think 30 bucks. Uh, but for someone like me who loves to sometimes just curl up with a pen and, and a notebook um, to just jot ideas out of my head, um, it's really great. And then I take out my phone and take a picture. And then it's, again, Evernote, remember everything. That's exactly what it does. But with the LiveScribe pen, you don't need special notebook. Paper. No, the LiveScribe live scribe pen, though, is way more expensive <laughs> right, right. Um, than, than the notebook. And then the LiveScribe pens are really neat because the new uh, Sky Pen, the Wi-Fi one, um, it actually will link directly to your Evernote account. So the minute that you record and stop recording, um, it'll send it directly to your Evernote account. So that note, the handwritten and the audio, will be directly saved to your Evernote account that you've linked with your Sky Pen. So you no longer need to connect your... Uh, pen, your LiveScribe Sky Pen, to a computer. It automatically, with the Wi-Fi connection, sends your notes to Evernote, which is amazing. Wow, that's so powerful. Yeah, I, it really, it's, it's every every day I'm, I'm, I'm learning something new um, about how to use it, and <laughs> it, it's just blown away. Uh, the, and the, the trunk has oh, the many trunk. options. Yeah. The trunk the trunk is great. The Doxy scanner, I'm a huge fan of these nice portable Doxy scanners. Uh D O X I E. Uh, I think it's go doxy go doxy.com I believe is the website. Um for some of my student work, um a picture is just not going to cut it for me. So, I scan it in and with the cool little uh, iPad um SD card adapter, um I can scan it in um using the SD card attached to the Doxy scanner, take it out, put it into the iPad, and the student can add a beautifully scanned piece of their work, their essay or whatever, directly into their Evernote portfolio. Uh, and that has been huge um, for my students who want a little more clarity in their work. And the scanners themselves are, uh, I think, under $100 and are amazing. Uh, I, I can't speak highly mm. enough about them. They've been really great in class. Uh, and, and my kids love them, and they're they're actually um, can be uh, run on battery, so they have to be connected to your computer. So I can actually pass around the scanner to all the kids to scan their work in, okay. and then drop it into their Evernote. So that's also been really huge too. Okay, because I saw somebody mention that earlier, and somebody asked how you embed things into a note. Um, right now, there is no HTML embedding. Um, that's uh, that's a suggestion I've been bugging them about, um, and you know. It's easy. It's funny as, as an Evernote ambassador, I always say, "Oh, I've got an idea to make it better. I've got an idea to make it better." And it's so easy to have the idea, um, but for them to do the coding on their end uh, has to be just a disaster. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I mean, I can't say whether or not it, it'll happen. I would love to see it happen. I think uh, it's a wonderful suggestion to have um, the ability to embed the code um, definitely into those notes. Um, for those that really want those things, one of the things you can do, again, is the Web Clipper does a pretty good job of, of, of capturing that information. But uh, as of right now, no HTML embedding code uh, for things oh. like storyboards or stuff like that. But it is a great idea. Uh -huh. Oh, I would have thought you could easily add in. Um, well, I mean, the code can be there, but it won't, it won't read it. It won't do anything, yeah. Yeah, it won't do anything okay. with it. Uh, you can add the URL, but you can't embed with HTML. Uh, yeah, you can yeah. add the URL. You can you can uh, hyperlink all you want, but um, you know the or the code to like you would embed anything 
we'll just uh -huh. show this code, which you know, you might want to save that code. You might have a really cool code that you want to save in a note and, and then copy and paste it and put that in a blog or something. Blog or something. That's cool, and yeah. you can save that code, but uh, it won't convert the code into you know, So that's what you would form. have to do with yeah, the blog. But that's, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the best way to do that. With the blogster thing, okay. Well, I think uh, those are all the questions that I had um, on my list. It was an extensive list. Well, I hope I'm, okay. I'm kind of scanning through everyone here. And somebody asked, if, is there a, an Evernote like EDU for younger students? But um, you can no, just as, use the regular Evernote. Yeah, the regular Evernote. I, I think someone fun. posted something about ads um, as well. Uh, oh, yeah. The, the one thing I can say is that I've never seen an inappropriate ad. <laughs> Um, yeah, you, you know, they're they're all, and a lot of them are actually ads for Evernote. And I don't know if you've ever noticed yeah, that. They're, I've noticed, and they're not very intrusive. No, it's a small, tiny little box in the lower left hand corner. Um, you know, but I mean, I can understand, you know, people who have issues with that. Uh, you know, Google has the same thing though, uh, for those mm -hmm. that you know the ads and issues like that. So it's very intrusive. You can actually close it, even though you have it. There's actually a tab to make the It'll go away. Kind of hide it, version, yeah. yeah, the premium version it completely eliminates it. Right. Uh, you know, but you know, I went a year with the free version, and it you know it didn't bother me. You know, it's just one of those things um, that's just kind of part of it. And again, when you're getting an like awesome it. service for free, when you're getting an awesome awesome yeah. service like this for free, a tiny little ad in the corner isn't um, you know the end of the world, at least for me. Yeah, and it lets me know new features that I might not have known about. It does. It does do that, and that and is actually really nice. Trunk, so I kind of like it. But anyway, we'll let you go. Um, I know it's getting kind of late. Uh, roll as soon as uh, when you exit the session, um, a survey link will automatically open in your browser, and so you just fill that out, and there's an area where you put your name and email address, and then we'll send you the certificate. Well, thank you to everyone for coming and visiting so and still here, and thank you for having me. And uh, you know, I'd be happy to come back and maybe do some more like uh, power user tips and tricks. Uh, oh yes, definitely. For, for Evernote and maybe get for into those, things yeah. like Sketch and maybe user. yeah, get into things like Sketch and and LiveScribe more specifically uh, than just kind of a, an overview. So I hope everyone had a great time. Uh, I'll see some of you at conferences, it looks like, uh, Linda and, 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 and all. Uh, again, thank you for having me, and I hope to be back uh, in the future. Are you going to be presenting at ISTE? I will be presenting at ISTE. I've got a, uh, uh, a session or two uh, at ISTE. I'm presenting at uh, my state conference, or anyone that's on here that's from Michigan, the McCall Conference uh, in mid-March. Uh, I'll have two, pre two presentations there. Um, I'm do, oh, actually doing a workshop on Evernote in, at, at ISTE. That's right. I have an hour and a half uh, hands-on workshop uh, at ISTE on Evernote. So for those that are interested, you can stop by there and sign up for that. That would be a great um, hands-on experience to really get in to see how some of these tools work. I'll be at ASCD in Chicago um, for those that are attending MAT. I'm not presenting, uh, actually learning. I decided to take a presentation off for once. And just go and learn. Um, and I think that's it for now. I think that's where I'll be going. Um, some conferences in uh, the summer in Indiana I'll be at presenting. So we'll keep that all uh, posted on my site for anyone that's interested in, in the area. You'll be uh, more than welcome to stop by. And for everyone else, do not hesitate to send me a tweet, send me an email if you have these questions. Um, I know I can't cover everything. and questions pop up, so do not hesitate yes, to, to contact me. I'm more than happy to help.